Everything you need to know about enlightenment, you can learn from the Eagles. There's one line in a song called Jet Airliner from the 1970s that says, you have to go through hell before you get to heaven. And I was reflecting today on something that, that hits me sometimes, and that is, I sometimes forget how incredibly challenging the awakening process really is, the path. I never totally forget because I work with people all the time going through so much, but it just struck me that to completely uh, confront and dismantle the identity structure <laughs> from the point of view of what feels so real, which is identity, is such a revolutionary act. It's such a crazy thing to do. It's irrational. Um, it's indescribably challenging in a way. It requires us to access parts of our experience or parts of ourself that are sort of designed to be hidden. Anyone who sort of starts out on this path, this pathless path, um, can't just can't even imagine how deep this goes, can't even begin to imagine how pervasive this unfolding really is and where it leads. And you will go through things that are just painful beyond description at times, confusing beyond description, disorienting. Um, as I say in the first chapter of my book, you know, you'll see things about yourself you didn't want to see, that you didn't know were there. You're starting a process that you won't be able to control. You're engaging something that is infinitely beyond you and dimension and subtlety and power essentially. So with all that said, I just wanted to offer a few words of support that, yeah, this is tough territory. <laughs> it's beyond you in, in a lot of ways. It's, it's a sort of transcendent experience that sort of obliterates the ego, the sense of self, the sense of separation, but it's also very gritty and very raw and very directly personal through a lot of it. Often those are the parts that surprise us how much we actually have to feel into these personal spaces that we've learned to build all of these coping mechanisms to avoid without even realizing that's what we've done. It's surprising to feel the fear of a child again, like full, raw, intense, but not having any coping mechanisms anymore. It's surprising, challenging. But like everything, it passes. <laughs> From one side of this veil of identity, things look so daunting, challenging, weighty, heady, raw, unyieldy, unwieldy, excuse me, unyielding. <laughs> Getting under resistance becomes damn near impossible because you are the resistance. <laughs> um, all of that's true from one side. From the other side, or from that placeless place through which you cannot approach uh, from, from a standpoint of a lens or a view, uh, from that standpoint, none of that's true. It's not true. There never was an identity. There never was a struggle. There never was suffering. There was never anything personal anywhere. Um, and for a period of time, these are simultaneously true. The suffering and the, the place of non-suffering were kind of intertwined and enmeshed with one another. And there's a tug of war and a push and pull between the two. Um, and it can feel like hell at times. But as the lyric says, you have to go through hell before you get to heaven, which is true. <laughs> Wouldn't necessarily describe liberation as heaven, but um, the, the, the depth of peace is rather astounding. The, the clarity is astounding and the, the sense of freedom as freedom, as naturalness, not as something you're experiencing or you're appreciating, or that's about you or your life or how you're living it. It's not like that at all. 
It's a freedom that is intrinsic to reality, let's say, for lack of a better way of saying that, for lack of any way of saying that. Um, yeah, it is, it is rather thoroughgoing, the clarity. And this is gratitude beyond gratitude. Once that lens has been discarded, that very fundamental lens, once the filters have dropped, once the inherent view has disintegrated, it's... It's just astounding that we can live with this freedom. That freedom is the nature of this, but it is. And it's rather beautiful. So no matter where you are along this pathless path, this very nonlinear um, unfolding that won't feel like a path most of the time, um, it's worth it. It's valuable. It's a valuable undertaking. I could say it's worth it because of what it delivers to you but I would be misleading. It's worth it because of what it sh demonstrates, what it shows, what it reveals to be true and what it reveals to be not true. It's well worth it, more than worth it. So if you're in the darkest of caves, it's okay. Even if it doesn't feel okay, it's okay. In the double barrel non-duality with Barb yesterday, which was really good, um, she said something that was so powerful. I've never heard anything said quite this way, but it was so good. She said, you have to be utterly willing. And when you are utterly willing, nothing is in your way. That's just so true, so accurate. So that willingness and what it is that that willingness will ultimately engage and confront in your experience in your life um, will take you to surprising places. I promise you that. <laughs> surprisingly challenging, surprisingly opaque, surprisingly free. But from the standpoint of that utter willingness, there really is nothing in the way anymore. It's just a matter of dropping, 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 dropping. And then just enjoy the dropping. And it can happen endlessly. But you will come to this place where there are no endings or beginnings, no birth or death, and no you and no place and no arrival and no departure. So it's all worth it. Ultimately, it really is. And if you started watching this video and you said to yourself, Angelo, it wasn't the Eagles that sang Jet Airliner. It was the Steve Miller band. <laughs> then I'll say to you, congratulations. You have good taste in music, and you know your 70s music. It indeed was Steve Miller. In the 1977, I believe, the song was released. And I've always loved that line. It's just so poignant and true. You have to go through hell before you get to heaven. It is rather like that. But you kind of transcend both, you know? You see through all heavens and hells, and then there's no need at that point to avoid any heaven or any hell or any sensation or any sound. Not only is there no need to, there's no ability to. And then even avoidance deconstructs. There's no such thing anymore. Can't happen. Yeah.